Hey, hey, bum, bum, bum. How's everyone doing? Uh, all right. Philly, uh, welcome back. .NET Phillies podcast. Phillies just wrapped up a series against the Reds. They split. It was a frustrating series, but there was some good, some bad. It was a mixed bag of everything. Um, so in today's episode, we'll go over all four of the games. We'll go over uh, keynotes, the pitching, what to expect uh, in the series coming up against the White Sox. And we have another edition of Pache Slander. Woo! Everybody's favorite segment. I got a lot of great feedback about that segment in the uh, in the last episode. That was like I think the most heated I've ever been talking about anything on the in the history of this podcast. So um, I don't like how. Hold on, professional over here. I don't like how you can't see the the laptop. Okay, because like it feels like I was like looking into a void, and I don't like that. I like when you guys can kind of see the laptop here so it's like i'm looking down yes because obviously my notes are here but it's like i'm here but here but you get my point it's the visual element of it all um all right so let's get right into it uh game number one the phillies fell to the red six to two uh it was just a bad game um it was kind of an unlucky game just one of those unfortunate games that that happened you know in baseball you know you play 162 bad stuff is bound to happen and it was just another just poor outing by the phillies offensively um and it was just meh you know you 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 kind of get the jump on um on lodolo early uh, you know, uh, polar opposite to what they they faced in their last outing against the Reds. You know, they jumped on them early. Uh, they couldn't push anything other than a run across in the first, which uh, uh, courtesy of Nick Castellanos, who continues to to look great at the plate and continues to impress me uh, uh, so far this season. And you know, it, it comes down to uh, just executing, and that's one of my key notes I have is the Phillies just just struggling again with runners in scoring position. And, and the hitting's not the issue with this team. Uh, they're hitting plenty. They're just not getting the runs across. They have guys on, I feel like, in every inning, and they can't get a run across. And it's frustrating because this team is second in the majors in OPS and batting average, and they're towards the bottom in runs. It, it don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. But... um. Uh, Jonathan India scored uh, scored to uh, to tie it in the in the first on a throwing error by JT and JT has been brutal this year. He he's looked better in the past couple games. It looks like he's starting to heat up a little bit, which is good. So um, that's good to see. And then um, we get to the third inning, and this was kind of the death by paper cuts uh, inning for for Bailey Falter. Yeah, the Kirk is, nothing was hit hard in this inning. It was all like little. Dinky grounders that got through, bloop singles. So Kirk Casale singled, Spencer Steer singled, Stuart Fairchild singled, Tyler Stevenson singled, and Will Myers singled, all to make it four to one by the end of the inning, which kind of sucks. Uh Kyle Schwarber had a had a Schwarbaum in the fifth to make it four to two. Then Will Myers RBI single in the fifth to make it five to two. Jose Barrero with an RBI double in the sixth to make it six to two. And that was kind of the final. The offense kind of fizzled out by then. And to no one's surprise, Christian Pache did not do anything. Um, I think. Let me let me. Let me back check. Let me research that before I make any bold claims. You know, he did make a base running error though in this game. You know, got thrown out at first, so no shocker there. Uh, let's see. Did Pache record a hit in this game? I'm willing to bet a lot of money that no, he did not. Let's see. Box score. Oh, my apologies, Christian Pache. You went one for three. My my apologies. Congratulations, buddy. You you did it. You you're you're yeah. 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 God, I hate him. I hate him with every fiber in my being. But luckily the Phillies face a whole plethora of righties. So Brandon Marsh can continue to prove why he should play every day. And he has continued to prove why he should play every day. Um, but see if old Topper listens. 
Uh, and then, so in terms of pitching, you had Bailey Falter went four and two thirds, eight hits, five earned runs, one walk, four strikeouts. I here's the thing, but Bailey Falter is this was a very unlucky start. A lot of blue pits. Uh, his bat bip was just so poor in this game. It sucks, but uh, these kind of starts happen, and these kind of starts happen specifically for Bailey Falter. I'm not worried about him moving forward. I think this was just a rock in the road. He looked solid in his first two starts, and then he hit the bump in the road, similar to how Matt Strom was in Game Three. But we'll get to that in a minute. I, I'm not particularly worried about Bailey Falter moving forward. I think he's going to be fine. I think. It's just a rock in the road. Just fine start. Uh, Bilotti went in, in a, a third of an inning, one hit, and uh, Matt, or not Matt Moore, Jesus, McKinley Moore, who was kind of a sacrificial lamb in this series. He, he's since been tr- uh, optioned to, to AAA, but he went an inning, a, a lot of hit, and earned Ron a walk and a strikeout. And then uh, Andrew Vasquez went two innings. Uh, I didn't realize this. Andrew Vasquez has like a 0.87 ERA. Um, and he's actually been really, really solid for us so far this year. I don't know if uh, Rob Thompson wants him in those lower leverage spots, kind of in, in the blow up, uh, kind of a mop up guy kind of role, which he's thriving in right now. Or if would you trust him in higher leverage situations? Me personally, I wouldn't right now. I just think in the role that Vasquez is in right now, going two, three innings at a time, I think he's doing great. I think it's perfect. He's saving the the high end guys. So um, I liked what I've seen so far from him. Um, so key notes for this game is why is Christian Pache playing again? Trick question, Jared, you idiot. It's because there was a lefty on the mound. Then he had a hit, and then Marsh came in and pinch hit, and I'm pretty sure he, he recorded another hit because all Brandon Marsh does is hit. Uh, the guy rakes. Like, Brandon Marsh rakes. Why is it he playing every single day? I don't understand it. He has just proven time and time again that he can hit lefties, he can hit righties, and he's played elite defense out there, which we knew what we were getting when we traded for him last offseason. But it just he's got to play every day. Topper, I'm begging you, buddy, please play. Uh, please, please, please play. Please play Brandon Marsh every single day. Thank you. Um, as I mentioned that, uh, starters really need to pick up, uh, some of the slack here. They did, um, in games two and four of this series, uh, between Taiwan Walker and, um, Aaron Nola. Um, so uh, yeah, the, the starters need to start going deeper and I get that stuff happens, but the bullpen already looks taxed and we're at the what 16th game of the season. And the bullpen is already running on fumes, so the starters need to start carrying their weight. And I I don't know what's going on with the Philly starters. I, I really don't. Um, they're walking a lot of guys. They're giving up a lot of hits. They're they're just not. I haven't really seen a dominant outing. You can be like, oh well, Jared. What about Matt Strom's first two start? Yes, they were good, but they weren't dominant. They weren't like like a Zach Wheeler, vintage Zach Wheeler start where he goes seven innings, one run, and strikes out like eight or nine guys. Like, I haven't seen that yet this year from a Philly starter. If I had to bet money, Zach Wheeler's pitching tomorrow, my money's on that game for Zach to be like the Zach Wheeler start. Uh, I can't wait for that clip to be taken out of context and and bite me in the in the ass, but we'll cross that bridge if and when we get to it, and hopefully we don't get to um, him sucking. Uh, Bryson Stott, his streak continued uh, through the series. He's now at 16, or is it 15? 15 or 16 consecutive games uh, hit streak to start the season. He is him. Bryson Stott, him. Bryson Stott equals him. He, I, 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 He's doing everything right. He's playing great defense. He's hitting the hell out of the ball. He's just, I love him at the top of the lineup. He's thriving there. And I like how Topper's sticking with him at the top of the lineup. And he has not batted an eye. He has just kept rolling and kept dominating as he has been. So very happy for Bryson Stott. Now we're moving on to game two, a game in which the Phillies won eight to three. My player of the game was Taiwan Walker, as, as I mentioned before. So Phillies were going off against, um, this wasn't the Ashcraft game. That was yesterday. It was 
Oh my God, who pitched in this game? I'm so sorry. I forget who pitched in this game for the Cincinnati Reds. It was it wasn't Ashcraft. It wasn't Sessa. It was Overton. Overton. Um, they had success against him in the Phillies in the Phillies the other series. So, um, uh, they kind of got the jump on him early. You had Turner single, Kyle Schwarber double in the first. They won nothing. Edmundo in the second hit his solo home run to make it two nothing. Uh, Castellanos again another double in the third to make it three nothing. Followed by a Marsh RBI triple to make it four nothing. JT a sack fly in the third to make it five nothing. Then um, the Reds started fighting back. Jake Fraley hit an RBI single in the third to make it five to one. Um, and then Jonathan India, an RBI single in the seventh to make it 5-2. So things were kind of getting a little tighter. And I was getting a little worried because they were chipping away in all the right areas. Um, and then uh, we get to the ninth and, and JT and Bohm kind of break it open. JT had the RBI double and Alec Bohm had the RBI single to kind of put it out of reach to um, to to uh, for the fills. So um, the main stories from this, uh, Taiwan Walker, this was his best start in the Phillies uniform, went six innings, four hits, one earned run, two walks, and four strikeouts. The key thing there is the walks. He walked a ton of guys in his in his previous, in his first two starts. He limited the walks in this start. His command is still eh. Like his, like I'm, like I don't know. He just doesn't feel like he has control of his secondary stuff, but I think there. It's seemingly that the Phillies wanted him to throw that splitter more and his off Steve off speed stuff more. When in reality, you need to establish that fastball. So I mean, if he, I don't know how good the tunneling metrics are at, at the Phillies. And for those of you who don't know, tunneling is kind of when you say throw a fastball like this. You then want to throw your slider like this, your curveball like this. So that way, as um, a batter, you don't know what pitch is coming out of that tunnel. You know, say if a pitcher throws a ball like this, a fastball, you know, down, but throws his curveball like this, you as a hitter can recognize that if the ball's coming at you like this, it's a fastball. But if it's coming like this at this angle, it's an off speed pitch. So coming back to that, I don't know how the tunnel works with Taiwan Walker, if he can establish that fastball and kind of tunnel it through with his slider and his split to deceive the the batters a little more. It looked like he was doing that in the start. I felt like he used his fastball a lot more in the start compared to um, his previous two. So it was good to to see him not only look better and only give up that one earned run and only the limit the walks to two, but also to go six innings. That was huge. Uh, um, Philly starters, as I mentioned before, have been struggling to get um, past that that five, six inning mark. So it was good to see. Um, and then uh, the, I have the stop thing. We kind of, I have it in all my notes. So if I reread it a thousand times, that's why, because uh, I take notes as the game's going on. So um, uh, we, uh, the pitching, Sir Anthony, um, something to to take note. He went an inning, allowed a hit, an earned run, a walk, and a strikeout. I don't know what's going on with Sir Anthony Dominguez. Um, am I worried Part of me is yes. Um, only reason is I'm not 100% hitting the panic, hitting the panic is because his velocity is still there. If the velocity was down, then I'd be like, oh my God, is this Tommy John acting up? Is he going to need another surgery? Is his shoulder bottom? What's going on? But if the velocity is still there. I just don't know if it's like a mechanical thing. It seemingly is. I don't know if it's a confidence thing. It just... His stuff isn't as sharp as it was last year, and as we've seen in years past, it just feels flat, and his off-speed stuff is is not as deceptive as it once was. I really don't know what it is. I trust him to figure it out and make the adjustment, and, and I'm sure we'll be fine, but that's just something to take note of. Uh, Jose Alvarado, three more strikeouts in this game. He is just... He's just unbelievable. And then Brogdon went an inning, uh, allowed a, a run and a and a walk. And, you know, Connor Brogdon's Connor Brogdon. I'm not the biggest Connor Brogdon guy, but uh, he looked fine. Um, so, yeah, the pitching was fine. It's just Dominguez scares me a little bit. Um, just, I don't, I don't know what it is. Uh, we, and we need him to be him again. We need, Sir Anthony to be the Sir Anthony that we know 
And we just haven't gotten that so far this year, which is alarming a little bit, but I'm sure um, Caleb Cotham and all the the analytics guys can figure that out sooner rather than later. Uh, that'd be great if they could, because a lot, uh, he just got that new contract and a lot is riding on him to be him. Um, uh, another note I have is Brandon Marsh needs to play every single day. And I think I'm going to harp on that every single time until he is playing every single day against lefties and against righties. Like just what, what's the worst that could happen if you're topper and you go, you know what? Screw it. Go out against the lefty Marsh. And what, what's the worst that he goes over for? Okay. Then go play Pache, I guess again. Uh, like I don't, I don't get it. I I know I'm I sound like a broken record when I keep going on and on about it, but that's it. Just pisses me off because you need to have your best guys out there right now, and he's not. Um, but whatever. Uh, and I mentioned before, uh, JT is heating up, which is really really good to see. We've been missing that bat in the lineup a lot, so to get another guy raking with Stott, with Casty, with Bohm, with Marsh, with Turner. I mean, Tur- Turner is just Turner. Um, and then Sosa has been hitting the hell out of the ball. You know, everybody, everybody hits. It's just a hitting with runners in scoring position and the power is not really there for, for anybody yet. So we'll figure it out. Um, game three, I'm going to spend a lot, uh, a, this much time on, um, because everything sucked. Uh, nothing went the Phillies way. They lost 13, nothing, nothing went the Phillies way. They got outscored. Uh, a lot. They just got outplayed. Um, just, yeah. Uh, the only highlight, Bryson Stott streak continued. Yay! And like I said, I'm going to mention it every time, but um, yeah, it was just bad. It was just a bad game. I was laying down here with Ashlyn, and it was just bad. I turned it off after uh, Will Myers hit the second homer. I'm like, I just can't watch this anymore. And then I'm like, oh, how bad could it be? So then I kept watching because I'm just, I hate myself. And it just got worse and worse and worse and worse and worse until it was 13 nothing and the game was over. So, um, yeah, I, I'm not even going to go over the scoring because it's all Reds. And this isn't dot net Reds. This is dot net Phillies, idiots. Uh, Matt Strom went two and two thirds, two hits, three and runs, three walks and six strikeouts. His stuff just wasn't there. It felt like as soon as the third inning uh, came around, uh, he was elevating his stuff. He didn't have control of that fastball anymore. He was just struggling to get through it. Um, you know, we hung that ball to Myers and Myers did not miss it. Uh, it just kind of sucks. Um, but I mean, I'm not worried about Matt Strom. I think he's going to be fine. I just think he lost control of his stuff. Uh, hey, that happens to guys. But in terms of pitching, you have Bellotti went an inning and a third. Uh, McKinley Moore went an inning. Vasquez went an inning. Soto went an inning. And Josh Harrison uh, went an inning. Six hits, five earned runs, a walk, and no strikeout. So shout out to Ace uh, Josh Vince Velasquez Harrison. Um, but yeah, just didn't go the Phillies way. It sucks, but it is what it is. Like you took two out of four. I was hoping for three out of four, but you know, you came out swinging today. Oh, one more note. Uh, Will Myers, you are a Philadelphia Philly. Uh, If I'm the Phillies, I'm calling up Cincinnati and going, what Will Myers is, what, what do you want for him? Because uh, I guarantee you can trade a bag of potato chips and get Will Myers to play first base. I think, uh, what do you got to lose, right? <laughs> like, uh, yeah, Will Myers, you are a Philadelphia Philly. So, book it. You know, if you have Will Myers at first, he's, I don't know. I don't know what their plan is at first, if they're just going to keep boom. Harper apparently is learning to play first base, which is crazy, but I kind of like it. Because if you have an infield of Harper, Stott, Turner, Boehm, and then an outfield of like Cave, Marsh, Casty, or Schwarber, Marsh, Cave, and then Casty as your DH or Schwarber as your DH. Not bad. But what's the worst that could happen? Uh, all right. Uh, today's game uh, Phillies 14, Reds 3. My player of the game was the aforementioned Brandon Marsh. He had uh, three hits in this game. And I felt so bad for Luis Sessa because Luis Sessa, let me read you his line here. I felt so bad for this guy because I was watching a little bit in my car on uh, on break. So Luis Sessa's line for this game is three innings, 
14 hits, 11 earned runs, three walks, no strikeouts. Poor guy. And shout out to David Bell for just leaving him out there to die. Shout out to you, David Bell. But shout out to Sessa for getting through three innings after giving up nine in the first. So credit where it's due. But uh, Sessa, uh, the Phillies kind of jumped all over him. Stott continued the streak. This was a solo home run. He had a Marsh single, a uh, Bohm single, Cave double, Harrison single, Turner single, Schwarber double, all to make it 9 nothing Phillies. Uh, those were all RBI's base hits, by the way. The Phillies finally hitting with runners in scoring position. Finally! Is it allowed to, to hit with runners in scoring position? Apparently, apparently it is because they did it today. Um, Casty had an RBI single in the third to make it 10 nothing. Jake Fraley had an RBI single on a Bohm error uh, to make it 10 to 1. Jake Cave, another RBI single to make it 11 1. You had Newman with a sack fly in the fourth to make it 11 2. India sack fly, 11 3. Boom, another RBI. JT had a solo home run. Stott, another RBI. The Phillies recorded 23 hits in this game. Um, it was an offensive master class. Uh, it was exactly what we thought. It's exactly what I think this team can do. Obviously, they're not going to score 14 runs every day, but they're still going to hit. And now they finally hit with runners in scoring position. And look what happened. What a concept. Um, you know, just... This was a great game. I couldn't watch it because I was working, but I was able to watch the first inning, some of it, and watch the onslaught that they released on on Luis Sessa. So um, this is a great, um, hopefully, jumping point to, to the offense being like, here we are. The pitcher, like Nola did not have to, I mean, Nola will get to him because I'm just not a fan right now. But um you see that he, uh, what was I saying? Oh God, I completely lost my train of thought. Oh, I, I, I hope this is a starting off point for this offense t- to be like, hey, we got this. We don't need our pitchers to stress when they go into starts because sometimes, you know, when the offense is struggling, if you're a pitcher, you feel like you have to be perfect because your offense is struggling right now. So hopefully this is a good starting off point for this offense and this is going to be the new norm going forward. Um, so fingers crossed on that. Uh, and then you had, uh, so in terms of other, so Nola went six innings, five hits, two on runs, three walks, four strikeouts. He went six innings. It just, I, eh, like, I'm just not, eh, I, I don't know what to think of Nola right now. He's made four starts this season and has been fine. Like he's just been okay if not a little below average, he's not a guy I'm giving $200 million to. He's just, eh. It was a better start. Don't misunderstand me. It was a much, much better start, and every start he's gotten better, but three walks, that's very on Nola-like. Four, only four strikeouts, again, very on Nola-like. I just, eh. I, I don't know what to make of Nola right now. I'm still very lukewarm with him. I'm still, again, like I said, I'm not worrying about any guys until the middle of May, but we're encroaching that time, um, which is scary and weird to think about, but it's the truth. Uh, You then have Brogdon an inning, a hit, no one runs, no walks, no strikeouts. Kimbrell went an inning, one hit, one, two strikeouts. Then Luis Ortiz made his Phillies debut. He played for the Giants last season. He was a first-round pick, I think, back in 2014. Um, Went an inning, a hit, uh, and two strikeouts, so shout-out to Luis Ortiz. Um, McKinley Moore was optioned before the start of the game, and they brought Ortiz up, so it was good to see him, and he looked pretty good. He looked fine. Um, I don't know. Again, it's hard to gauge how good pitchers are when you're up by 10 runs or 11 runs at that point when he's pitching in the bottom of the ninth inning. So it's hard to really gauge that, but it was still good to see. Um, uh, Some keynotes you had Bryson Stott is just amazing. He's on another level right now. Um, He is just, I think he is the guy right now who all Phillies fans thought he was going to be when he was initially called up a guy who just hits the ball, hits the ball, hits the ball, has a little bit of pop. We saw his first Homer of the year uh, today. So I I just love Bryson Stott right now. Um, Again, I have in my notes, I kid you not in three separate occasions, Brandon Marsh needs to play every single day. And then just because I put, I hate Pache 
um, because I am a um, Christian Pache hater. Figure it out. Um, so, yeah, you took two of four. It was an annoying series, yes, but it's over. We don't see the Reds again. I don't know. There's no way we see the Reds again. So, in the past, I uh, can't wait to see Will Myers in a Phillies uniform come July. Um, if, if Harper isn't playing there already. So, um, the next series, we have um, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. We have um, the Chicago White Sox will be in Chicago. Pitching matchups are as followed. So, we have Zach Wheeler versus Lance Lynn, Bailey Falter versus Lucas Giolito, and Taiwan Walker versus Mike Clevenger. So, very good pitching matchups on paper. Um, these pitchers uh, outside of Clevenger haven't really been dominant. Um, and uh, I, I think um, it's not going to be an easy th- series. I do think take two out of three, that's always the goal of every series. But if, I mean, if you go on this road trip and you go four and three, yeah, if you go four and three on this road trip, good road trip. Um, so I think you take two or three. It's not, I, I expect some low scoring games. The only one I think might not be a low scoring game would be the Bailey Falter versus Lucas Giolito. Uh, Giolito, Giolito has looked like a shell of, of his 2021 self, um, last year and to start the season early this year. Um, so I expect that game of any of them to be a little high scoring, um, and then hopefully, um, you know, all of these guys took big steps forward uh, in their previous start. Well, I guess not falter, but in terms of Zach Wheeler and Taiwan Walker, both took massive steps forward in terms of the production we think we can get out of these guys. So I hope that they continue to build off that. I hope Bailey Falter bounces back against a pretty good uh, Chicago White Sox offense. Um, I expect to take two out of three. We'll see where it goes. What time is the... Wednesday. Okay, the Wednesday game is at two ten. So, um, that's gonna that's gonna do it for me. You have two night games and a day game, um, for this series. So that's gonna do it for me. Thank you guys for for watching. Please like and share and follow on all the socials down there. And I hope you enjoyed. Well, we're gonna be back on Wednesday night. Well, probably around the same time, um, Wednesday to talk about the White Sox series. So I will talk to you guys then. Oh, <laughs>